1. We do takeout. It's not as common anymore or what with seamless, but sometimes people still pick up food like on their way back from work or whatever. We do all takeout orders, seamless or otherwise, on a first order, first served basis. So even if a guest places a takeout order and waits in the restaurant for it to be completed, they don't get priority over someone who placed a seamless order before they came in. We had a guy, let's call him Rude Guest, call in a takeout order and show up five minutes after placing the call asking if his food was ready. We told him it would be 25 to 30 minutes, like we told him on the phone when he placed the order. He stands at the server station and is tapping his foot and giving us expectant looks. Meanwhile, the seamless driver comes in wearing his yellow reflective vest and bike helmet. So clearly a delivery driver. We say, for Hannah. Driver confirms we hand him two bags of food. Rude guess goes crimson. Hey, I was here before that guy, he just walked in. I explain the recipient of that order placed it before he arrived. He shoots back that the guy had only just walked in when he got food, but rather than try to explain seamless to him, I say, he placed his order over the phone like you did. That shuts RG up, he just says, If I have to wait, you might as well get me a beer. Fine. I smile and grab him one. Unfortunately, professors from my college have started to frequent my restaurant, so I have to be extra careful about how I handle these situations. Five minutes later, another seamless order is finished up, and we put it on the counter. Keep in mind, Rude Guest has been here for a total of ten minutes and placed his order fifteen minutes ago. This is... egregious. I have been here so long I have lost track of time. Go back and check on my food right now. <sighs> up to this point, I had been having a good day, so I was hoping I'd finish out the shift without any fights. I go in back and ask how long on his food, and lucky for both of us, they were ahead and finishing it early. I went out and told him it would be out in two minutes. He said, finally! Oh, and by the way, I'm gluten-free. He's polished off his beer, by the way. But we don't often have special dietary requests, so I give him the benefit of the doubt and assume someone else in his party is gluten-free. Or maybe it takes more than one beer to trigger his allergy. I don't know much about gluten sensitivity. I ask if he communicated his request to the person who took his order. He said he figured it was assumed. Rather than ask why in the world we would assume he was gluten-free, I checked his order. Of course, he ordered a quesadilla, flour tortilla tacos, and a tart dessert made with gluten. I go back and explain to him, and start to say we'll remake it free of charge, manage a policy on food sensitivities, even if they didn't say anything beforehand. He doesn't let me get that far, though. He is pounding his fist on the station, ranting about how restaurants are required to provide gluten-free options. Not true. And that he's calling the Better Business Bureau. I repeat to him, we are remaking it. He says, great, at this rate, maybe I'll have it before the birth of my first grandchild. I just ignore him at this point, because there's nothing more I can do but make things worse. A party of eight comes in booked by two regulars who made the reservation weeks ago for a birthday celebration, so I jump in to help my colleague get them settled. I was gone for three minutes tops. I go back to the server station and this guy is walking out with a bag of food. I'm impressed at the turnaround, but figure the kitchen heard him giving us a hard time and took pity. Two minutes later, after Rude Guest exits, a seamless driver walks in and says, Picking up for Otto? We have no bags. I ask the kitchen. They say they just put that order out. I'm getting a funny feeling and ask when they finished the gluten-free remake of the other order, and in so many words they say, It's been five minutes while making it, get off my dick! Having to remake this guy's order has killed their lead and they're pissed. So his order isn't finished. He walked out with a seamless order he knew wasn't his, and every item in the order contained gluten and it was twice the price of the meal he'd prepaid for. Having to remake the seamless plus the party of eight order puts the kitchen behind, and the place is madness for the final hour of my shift. Rude Guest is now banned, and I hope he or someone in his party really did have a gluten sensitivity, so he couldn't eat a bite of it. Two, buckle up kids, this is gonna be a long one. 
So my final table last night walked in, and I could tell that the two of them were gonna be fun. Hi. We want the happy hour stuff. Okay, so table for two? I then asked what they'd like to drink. What kind of beer do you guys got? Well. Oh, domestic is on the happy hour menu. What's that? Domestic is anything made in this country, so stuff like... Oh, so Stella? No, definitely not Stella. Canadian Coors Light, bud. Okay, we'll have two Coors. Awesome. Bottle or draft? What's the difference? Thinking... Really? Well, one comes in a bottle, and the other comes out of a tap. Which one's more? I was about to ask more what, amount of beer or money, but the girl cut in then. Her, in possibly the snottiest one I've ever heard. It says right there that the draft is more. So I don't know why you're even asking us this. Why is he even asking us this? Okay, two bottles coming up. Everything after that was a bit normal. They ordered an app while looking at the menu. I brought out their app, and they started ordering. He ordered a Caesar salad that comes discounted when you order a pasta. She ordered a pasta. Spaghetti Alfredo with mushrooms and sun-dried tomatoes. Then this happened. Can I get, like, a lot of mushrooms? Okay, so do you want a double order of mushrooms? No, I just want extra mushrooms. Yeah, I mean, like, we don't want to order double of them. Just get them to put, like, extra mushrooms on it. Heavy on the mushrooms. Well, everything is weighted, so they put the same amount of mushrooms in every order. You'd have to order double if you want more. Aw, oh, man, you're not getting me. Just, just tell the chefs to put heavy mushrooms in it. They'll know what it means thinking as if I don't know what that means. Haven't worked in restaurants for the past 12 years. Will do. Do you guys have feta? Yes. Does it cost extra? Now getting worried because they added stuff already to the pasta. Yes, every addition to the pasta costs extra. Okay, never mind. And with that, we were done ordering. I didn't tell the kitchen anything about the mushrooms. Things are fine. I bring their order out, do a quality check, and then later, Guy flags me down and asks for more garlic toast because it's so good. Well, at first he asked for more bread, so I had to clarify which bread he meant. He then ordered four more pieces of garlic toast. So I go punch that order in. Five seconds after I punch in the order, Buddy runs up to me. Hey, does that garlic toast cost extra? Yeah, when you order more things in a restaurant, we charge you for them. Oh, uh, Buddy... You didn't tell me that. Was I supposed to? Should I explain to everyone who comes into the restaurant that they actually have to pay for things? I was only thinking this, of course. Well, how much more is it? I check. They're $2.39 for two pieces, and you wanted four, so about five bucks. Can I cancel two of them? Sure. As I run to the kitchen to stop them from putting in four pieces, so they get their garlic toast, I'm doing my clothes, and my co-worker asks if I can watch the bar while she smokes. So I go over there and I'm standing around wiping stuff looking busy, and I see my best friend in the world get up from his seat in the dining room and walk back to the serving area and out of my sight. He was full on in the dish pit before I got to him. When I got there he was talking to one of the kitchen guys with his plate of toast in hand, the kitchen guy, who no doubt stopped him before he went all the way into the kitchen, was telling him to talk to the manager. Hey there, what can I help you with? This toast, man. It's not that good. Okay, first we need to get out of this area. Customers aren't allowed in this area. Hey man, don't shoo me. Okay, sorry about that. So you don't like the garlic toast, what's wrong with it? I don't know. It's just not good. It's stale. I looked down at the plate. One piece was fully intact, and the other was cut in half with the other half missing. I don't know how it could be stale, it was brought right in from the oven to your table. I don't know, it's just not as good as the first one. Fully done dealing with them. Okay, so you don't want it? I took the plate away, and hoped it would be over soon. 
He asked for the bill about two minutes later and I brought it over. He then asked for the machine and I was very thankful. I got it ready as I walked over there and when I got there he just tapped the billfold. So I looked inside and there was nothing there. I looked at him and this happened. No oh, man, just leave the machine. I'll do it when I'm ready. Well, I can't do that. I need to push certain buttons and if I leave and you don't pay right away, the machine will time out and I'll have to come back and get it started for you again anyway. I can come back later if you aren't ready. No. Starts fumbling in his pockets and pulls out a card. The payment went through. I got the slip. With a two whole cents as a tip. Probably because he couldn't figure out how to not tip me. And went on my way. I'm about 99.9% .9 certain that they would have just gotten up and left if I had left the machine at their table. So I'm finishing up my clothes, walk near them, but can't see them, and the guy is looking pretty sketchy. So I figure they're doing something to mess with the table. After they leave, I go clean their table and find their plates neatly stacked, with their beer bottles on top, a thin menu placed on top of them, and the palm and pepper shakers balanced on top of that. I imagine they thought they got me good and had the last laugh, but jokes on them. The tower was very stable, and it took 0.2 seconds to take down. And they stacked their plates very nice and neatly for me to take to the dish pit. So random couple, who I'm pretty certain were quite stoned, if you're out there, I just want to thank you for making my job, at the very least, easier and giving me a novel to post. Three, so I'm currently a manager in training at a restaurant that I've been employed with for about a year and a half now. I occasionally serve still, though, because we don't have many servers employed and if one calls in, I'm expected to cover. Yay. Anyway, so this took place in one of those days. This woman pulls up to the drive-thru to pick up an order. The conversation follows as such. Hi, picking up an or Throws coupon at me, literally. The name is Shonda. Okay, great. Pulls up order. It seems here that you have a large pizza and a 20 ounce soda. And this coupon is only for a free pizza, so your remaining total is going to be $1.69. Did you want to pay with cash or card? What? What do you mean? $1.69? Ugh, whatever. Just take the pop off. Okay, hun, no problem. I'll go grab your order now. I turn around and grab her pizza from the heater and return to the window in about ten seconds. Here you go, dear. You're all set unless there's anything else I can get you. No, it's fine. Okay, have a good day. I close the window. At this point, I turn around to help the person at the counter who has just walked in the building when she begins to scream through the drive through window. Hey, excuse me, I need plates and napkins. I open the window. Okay, just give me a second, hun. I'll pull together a bag of those for you. I finish helping the guy at the counter as I'm grabbing the bag of plates and napkins for her. Alrighty, you're all set. Have a good one. I asked for plates and mints. Where are my mints? Realizing that I misheard mints as napkins, or she just didn't say mints, and also knowing that we are currently out of mints, oh, I'm sorry, I misheard you and thought you said napkins. We're actually out of mints at the moment, I'm sorry about that. Is there anything else I can get you? What do you mean you're out of mints? How are you out of mints? We go through them pretty quickly and don't get our next food shipment until a few days from now, so we'll just temporarily be out until then, I'm sorry. Really? You're really out of mints, what's your name? What's that look on your face? Realizing that I'm squinting in the sun and may seem like I'm annoyed with her. Oh, I'm not making a face, I promise. I'm just squinting because I can barely see you in the sun. My name is Lemon Lady 7 We really are out of mints for a few days, though. It just happens sometimes. You're more than welcome to come back and fill up when we have them in stock, though. Well, you can't take that out on your customers. Are you having a bad day or something? Is that why you ain't got no mints? No, ma'am, we're just out of stock. If you don't mind if there's nothing else I can get you, I do have a customer at the counter who needs help. I hope you have a wonderful day. I then waited about five seconds for her to respond. 
She simply glared at me, so I closed the window and she drove off. Oh, but it doesn't end there. About 15 minutes later, she comes back into the store and asks to speak to a manager. I go and get the manager on duty because even though I could technically handle her complaint, I simply didn't feel like it. I'd had enough of her and don't think I could have remained nice if I had to. My manager comes up and she tells him that I was super rude, had no customer service and refused to give her mints. The manager then confirmed that we did indeed not have mints and that I wasn't lying or trying to be rude, I just couldn't give her what she was asking for. She didn't believe him until he showed her the empty box. She then asked for the corporate number so she could complain formally. Everyone at my job knows that I'm a total sweetheart to my customers and genuinely enjoy interacting with them and am never rude to them. Hell, I've won an award for our job for my hospitality. I've received numerous positive reviews about me online and in person given to our corporate staff and was also the only server given a raise during my time there. Even though it's against normal policy. Plus the promotion. Are you kidding me? I'm not trying to be cocky, I just know damn well that I was being as nice as possible. And she wanted an excuse to complain. An excuse that I didn't give her. I hope that crazy bitch went next door to the dollar store, which is literally in the same parking lot as us, and got the same mints we give out here for a dollar. She was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, man. So yeah, people suck, and I'm glad I'm not a waitress anymore. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. 4. So this happened the week before Christmas. It was a really busy Saturday night, and I had a big round table with eight people at it. There was a second party of ten that came in, and they had a 7.30 reservation for the same table. The hostess told them that she was really sorry, but they needed to wait a few minutes for the party of eight to leave. Everyone seemed cool with it, and they went to the bar to get a few drinks while they waited. 7.45 they sat down at table. I went over and apologized for the wait and took their drink orders. As I left to get their drinks, my busboy brought them bread and water. When I came back to the table, I saw one lady, we'll call her Karen, standing up and dabbing at her pants. I also saw my busser apologizing profusely and offering her more napkins while he picked up some ice from the floor. Apparently, he tipped a water glass on his tray accidentally and a little water spilled on her. I asked Karen if she was alright and she said very calmly, no, it's okay. Accidents happen, and it was just a little bit of water. I'm all right. She also refused the extra napkins we offered her. All throughout dinner, I checked on them and asked if they needed anything, how's the food, etc. Everyone was happy. Even Karen said everything was fine. Towards the end of the meal, another guy at the table, Joe, privately told me to give him the bill at the end, as he was treating everyone to dinner for Christmas. I gave him the bill. He paid for everything, including a 25% tip. The party got up and thanked me and my busser and left. I collected the bill and went to the bar to give it to the manager so he could close it. Out of nowhere, Karen walks back in and said she wants to speak to a manager. She came up to me and my manager and proceeded to tell him that this was the worst service she had ever had in her whole life. They waited over an hour for their table. The busser spilled a lot of water on her. My ass is still wet. And didn't offer napkins. And the busser spilled water all over her cousin. I later asked my busser if that happened, and he said as he was clearing he dropped a fork on the floor near the cousin. The cousin was also pretty buzzed. And while trying to be funny, exclaimed that my busser got food on him. Karen apparently missed the joke. At this point, my manager looked at me to confirm that any of it is true, and I just stared at her with my jaw dropped. She also continued to say that our bathroom was covered in shit, which was a lie since we constantly checked to make sure they're clean, and that we should have offered to comp their desserts at the very least, since they spent a lot of money. My manager snuck a glance at me that said she knew she was full of bullshit and fishing for a comp. Then she finished her tirade by sticking her finger in my face over the bar and exclaimed, You know we were very generous with your tip, but if it wasn't Christmas time, you would get nothing. And stormed out. I was so taken aback from the whole thing. 
Karen didn't even pay for shit. Joe did. Absolutely the worst customer I've ever had. 5. This happened about two years ago, but I'll try to include as many details as I can remember. I live in Germany, but during my summer break from university, I worked in a small old cinema in a small town. I worked the snack station in the front, aka I prepare your snacks, sold the tickets, took reservations, cleaned and made sure everything was stocked. But most of our drinks were served inside the rooms. You would go to your seat, press a button, and one of us would scurry to your seats and take your drink orders, and prepare them at the bar in the back. So you got your drinks in an actual glass with ice. If you were 18 plus, you could actually get alcoholic beverages. We did not have a soda fountain, and we did not have big paper cups to pour drinks into. The usual serving size was 0.33 liter for soda. There were no smaller or bigger sizes. The most popular popcorn flavor in Germany is also sweet. Not caramel, just sweet. Salty popcorn can only be found in big chain cinemas in big cities. One day a man, a regular I had seen plenty of times before, his wife and a random woman wearing a bald eagle shirt which I don't recognize, walk in. I greet them, sell them tickets and since it was a slow day, we would fight over who got to do the next task because we were bored as fuck. My colleague was eager to handle the sale of snacks while I took reservations for that evening. I'm not paying attention to my colleague until I hear something yell in English. What do you mean they can't sell me bigger soda? The regular tries talking to the woman I didn't know in English to the best of his abilities, and my colleague motions for me to help. Putting on my best smile, I walk over and ask in German and English whether I can be of any help. The woman, henceforth we shall refer to her as A.W., turns and continues yelling at me how she wants a gallon of coke. I tell her that we only offer this one serving size, but she is free to order multiples of those throughout the movie. She goes off on a little rant about how stingy Germans are with soda, which I ignore because I get it. It's weird being in a foreign country and adjusting to everything around you. No need to be an ass, but whatever. My colleague has noped out at this point. She's disappeared into the back and I can't blame her because that poor girl had only started working there two days earlier. It's at this point that the regular already starts profusely apologizing. A.W. is some very distant relative who got in touch with them when she discovered she still had relatives in Germany, and because they seemed to get along, they decided to host her for a while and show her around the area some common ancestors had originated from. I tell him it's fine, and him and his wife should just go get to their seats. I literally tell him that I got this. I return to take her order. She wants salted popcorn. We do not have salted popcorn, and I say as much. She asks me why, and I tell her it's just not as popular in Germany, hence we don't make it. Then go make some! I explain to her why that is not possible. We only have one machine which would have to be cleaned in order to make salted popcorn, for which we also lack supplies, etc. A.W. is not having it. She keeps going on and on and on about how Germans are stingy and weird. Uh, we clearly have no taste in food, to her defense. The area this cinema was in, and that I am also from, is not known for its amazing cuisine. Of course, I'm getting annoyed, but when dealing with customers, you have to have that unwavering smile plastered on your face, and just silently swear in your mind. She eventually settles for nachos with cheese, not without complaining about our tiny serving sizes, and gets to her seat where she proceeds to order a Coke. Surprise, surprise, she only ordered one bottle of Coke. Guess the... Guess the 0.33 liter were enough after all. According to my colleague who served her the drink, she made it a point to tell her that she would not be tipping. Boo-hoo. We get paid 8 euros minimum wage per hour and don't have to rely on tips for survival. Anyone who works full-time earns more than that. You only tip if you think the service was good and you can afford to do that. During the pre-movie ads, the regular comes out again and continues apologizing, again. My colleague and I tell him it's fine and we're sorry he has to deal with her more frequently. On the way out, A.W. stopped by the snack station again to tell me she would not tip. Bummer. I'm about to cry, lady. And America is the best. She didn't say that word for word, but I don't recall her five-minute speech on the matter. 
just to throw this out there before someone jumps to the conclusion, I know that not all Americans are like that. I've had plenty of good encounters during my various part-time jobs in university. She just sticks out like a sore thumb alongside the guy who complained about his beer not tasting like Bud Light and wanting a refund. He didn't order Bud Light because we don't sell that. Or the lady thinking that a manager will automatically give her stuff for free. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates, episode 40. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I plan on doing as little as possible this weekend, if I can get my videos done on time. Not guaranteed, but I might be close. I don't want to jinx it. Um, taking baby steps to recovering, it's... Whenever I have a bad one like this, it's always little by little by little, and usually I get back to normal. To the point you think one day, oh, I'm actually starting to feel much better. Uh, but don't want to jinx it. I've, I've had a little improvements over the course of the week, and... But then again, uh, the badness snuck upon me very quickly. As it often does with uh, that, that condition. But, well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I did start catching up on American Gods the other night, so I might finish... Well, not finish it, but, you know, uh, finish the, the two episodes I've got to watch. Uh, not loving it quite as much as I did last series, season. Um, I'm a bit iffy on new media. Don't Don't hate her. But to be honest with you, I think with that character it would have been far better. Um, uh, we're now doing TV talk with Hellfreezer, make a cup of tea. Um, I think with that character it would have been much better, even from the beginning, as much as I love Gillian Anderson and I love Gillian Anderson <laughs> in many levels, um, it would have been better just to hire a, a series of uh, impersonators, different actor for every persona, that media was meant to take on. Uh, that way it wouldn't really matter if actor stayed or went. And uh, instead of having one person clearly, who was clearly Gillian Anderson doing a very good job of looking like, you know, Lucy or Bowie or I think it was Marilyn Monroe as well. There was another one I'm forgetting. Um, yep, completely blanking on the other one. I can remember what she looked like. Anyway, um, you would have had people who looked a lot closer to the actress and obviously... You also hire people who can act, but the fact of the matter is, impersonators are actors. That's part of the job. It's what they do. Uh, but no, they went with this new media thing when Gillian Anderson decided to jump ship with Brian Fuller and his partner. And uh, that's what we've got. So, yeah, I'm not blown away. Don't hate it, but not blown away. We'll see how it all shakes out. Okay, with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourselves.